Welcome back guys, I am Foligon, and this is day 19 of Sculptober. In this one, we're going to be focusing a little bit more on some hard surface modeling. As soon as I saw this amazing illustration by Katie, at StarSoulArt on Twitter and Instagram, of a Magnemite, I knew I had to make it. But before we get in and talk about the process, if you are new around here, click that subscribe button. And if you want to learn more about digital sculpting, check out gumroad.com slash Foligon, where you can find things like my courses, brushes, and materials. So in this one, we are going to be focusing in a little bit more on some hard surface modeling. Hard surface modeling encapsulates a lot of different ideas and strategies for creating form, but for the most part, I am going to be using the Z Modeler brush here inside of ZBrush to create all the low poly forms that I need, and then using tools like Live Boolean to subtract or add form where I need it. I start off with a sphere for Magnemite because, well, that's what his body is, and then it's immediately off to creating the magnets. I actually had to do this part twice because I got this far and then ZBrush crashed on me. I actually experienced quite a few crashes working on this piece. For some reason, ZBrush can handle so many millions and millions and millions of polygons, but as soon as you throw like six polys at the dang thing, it freaks out and crashes on you. That's not entirely true, but ZBrush really does not do super well with this low poly geometry and a lot of the crazy operations that I like to throw at it really quick. Already for creating that basic magnet shape, I have used live boolean to subtract the middle portion. Uh, essentially all I did was create a basic archway, and then I duplicated that archway and subtracted the middle segment from that, and got a pretty nice magnet form. Uh, I tried just kind of creating that shape with a tube of geometry, but I couldn't get the arch or arc of that to go exactly the way I wanted. So I ended up doing it this way to get a little bit more close and accurate to the shape of a magnet. Then it's on to creating some of the smaller details for the actual body of Magnemite. This includes a little bit of an extra edge around the eye? Eyeball? <laughs> the white part of his body. I guess it's his eye. I think it's supposed to be his eye. A little bit weird here. He's kind of just one giant eyeball in a way. But yeah, you can see the subtracted form around there creating a a nice clean beveled edge and then the actual kind of happy eye shape that I create on top of that because we want a happy Magnemite. I didn't want just the plain dot in the middle, that felt a bit boring. And then we're off to a part that I really enjoyed working on which was creating the Phillips head screw that is going to go on top of his head and the two that are going to be kind of like tiny little legs I guess or something, they stick out of his chest or his eyeball. You know, he doesn't really have a lot of parts, he's just kind of a sphere. Uh, so the screw here, essentially what I used was an initialized spiral. So you can see that on screen right now. For that, you can kind of adjust some of the initialized settings. I cut out most of that because it's pretty boring, me just kind of working with sliders until I got the specific shape that you see on screen. Then I go through and use things like scaling and squashing with the transpose line to get that a bit closer to the proportions that I needed for the shape. Then a simple sphere that I can cut in half and begin working on creating the top head of the screw. And then I use a quick Boolean subtraction to begin subtracting the actual kind of Phillips cut in for that. That's pretty easy to do, but I need to get the actual screw in place because I need to have that there on top of the head just so I can look at my reference for Magnemite and figure out the proportions a little bit more closely. Uh, you'll also notice for those that are maybe a bit more familiar with ZBrush that I have remeshed the top part of the screw to lower the poly count there. The initial topology that I had there was just a little bit too dense, so I had to adjust that to get something a little bit lower poly, a little bit more clean, and that actually helped to get me also a nice soft, uh, almost beveled-like effect for the bottom edge. A lot of hard surface modeling tips that I have are pretty much bevel every single edge. You can get a lot of nice effects on hard surface forms that are relatively simple, simply by uh, playing with how hard or soft you're gonna make an edge, or playing around with the distance of the bevels of those edges. This really helps to make it so that your form has a little bit more character. If you don't have a bevel, you're essentially just translating from one surface to another. Uh, think of like a cube as you turn over that edge, it's just top and then side. But if you have that bevel, it gives the highlight around that area just a little bit more room to play around. And then like I said, playing around with how hard or soft that is, you can give it a bit more character. Some quick materials here in ZBrush just to throw on a quick metal effect for the screw. I adjust all the materials in my render, so it doesn't really matter here, but it's nice to just kind of get a basic feel for it. 
Then it's on to creating the light bulb. For this, I start by using radial symmetry on a sphere to begin kind of creating the basic shape of the light bulb, but I don't use this. I end up deleting this later on and uh, trashing it because I realized that I was just wasting a bunch of time playing around with radial symmetry. Although it was fun, it's not incredibly accurate on a dynameshed form like I have here, so I opted to polymodel that instead. But before we get there, I have to polymodel a few more pieces here for the light bulb. You can see me just adjusting some of the edges and form there using things like extrusions, bevels, creases, all sorts of really cool, fun stuff that if you are interested in learning more about, I will throw a tutorial on screen for you guys. And then just some minor tweaks and adjustments here to get things feeling a bit closer to the section that screws in for the light bulb. I'm not sure if that actually has a specific name off the top of my head, I do not know, but I'm gonna call it the screwy bit. Nice little screwy bit there, wrapped up, and then just adjusting the geometry for the connective part between the glass and the screwy bit, which is now the technical term. <laughs> and then for the actual light bulb here, creating a new one, as you can see, just using a low poly cylinder that I begin extruding those different edges in. I'm cheating a little bit with my slice curve brush to insert new edge loops. And then you can see the form kind of alternating between this really hard shape and then this soft rounded shape. That is called a dynamic subdivision. And the idea there, for those that don't model, is that I am essentially pre-visualizing what my geometry would look like if I were to subdivide it. And a subdivision, for those that don't know, is essentially uh, taking a piece of geometry and multiplying it by four. And when you typically do that, it also smooths out the edges of that form. So that's why the shape there is softening quite a bit around that area. A good example of subdividing a piece of geometry to smooth it out would be if you had a cube and you added some subdivision levels to that, it would slowly start forming into something a bit closer to a sphere. It wouldn't turn into a perfect sphere because the geometry isn't distributed properly, but it would get pretty close. And that's subdividing with a smooth modifier on, which is the standard way to use it. But of course you can turn that off and subdivide without it. Your form just wouldn't change at all. Then on to creating some of the inner bits for the light bulb. I greatly simplify a lot of this form, just creating the basic or general idea of what is inside there. I didn't want to spend a ton of time creating a piece that was going to be, uh, you know, really kind of blown out by the light around it. So I didn't worry about it too much, but just wanted to create kind of the basic feel there for the filament and everything else to get the general aesthetic or the general idea of the inner workings of a light bulb. And it also gave me some geometry that I could apply a glowing material to later on when I went to render it. Now we're on to moving everything into place. I would normally call this stage of the process posing uh, if I were working on a more organic character. But for this, uh, it's I guess a little bit of posing in a way because I do pose the character of Magnemite. But for the most part, it's just kind of moving the pieces that I already have there. So adjusting his little magnet arms into a more uh, fun and asymmetrical pose, and then using Transpose Master to take all of my subtools, combine them into one mesh, and then adjust everything at the same time. What's really nice about this is that it's a quick way to adjust a lot of geometry. You can even sculpt on it with all your brushes during the stage. Obviously, I don't wanna do that here because I'd be messing up my hard surface form. But once you make all those changes, you can just T-pose that back and it'll make all those changes to every single subtool that you have in your list. I actually use the same exact tool when I am posing organic characters. Here, it's just a little bit easier. Then on to creating the lightning around the character. This was pretty simple to do as well, just using a curve brush a curved tube snap specifically, and getting some quick little tubes in there that I could apply a glowing material to in Blender. After I drew them into place though, it took some adjusting to get them feeling a bit better from the side, because as you can see, they have kind of this really straight line stretched quality to them, and that is because I created these from the front view only, and because of that, it kind of stretched them all back really awkwardly. So I went back through with my move brush and made some adjustments there, pulling out some of the shapes from the profile to make the distribution of form uh, a little bit more erratic. Get rid of any straight lines, anything like that, making sure it had as much character from the side as it had from the front. Then it's off to the old render farm, AKA me, 
to render the character up, which I pretty much always do in Blender. I did some fun things this time around, like adding some glass, metal, and some glowing effects to things like the lightning and light bulb. But that is pretty much it for today's video. If you are new around here, click that subscribe button. And if you want to learn more about digital sculpting, check out gumroad.com slash Folygon for all of my brushes, courses, and materials. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I will see you in tomorrow's video with the Prompt Storm.